Hi, welcome. This is Barbus Boys. Barbus Boys. I'm Jason Barbus. I'm Andrew Barbus. And we are with Yaya B. Greek Seasoning. Mm -hmm. What uh, are we making today, Jason? Today we're going to be making some tzatziki sauce, which is a yogurt-based sauce, uh, cucumbers, some garlic, mm. and then some of our Yaya B. Greek Seasoning. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Sounds good. So where do we start? We are starting with two cups of Greek yogurt. I like okay. to use Chobani. Uh, this one here is a non-fat, a little healthier for you, but I, a lot of the times I like to use either the whole milk or the 4% um, fat in that. It just gives it a little more body, gives a little thickness to it, and uh, just impl improves that flavor. Sure. So, so with the two cups of yogurt, we're also going to throw in about a cup of chopped, uh, finely chopped cucumber. So what we have here is just an English cucumber. Um, a lot of the times we use that English cucumber because there's not as much liquid in it compared to your regular cucumbers. Um, if you are to use that regular cucumber, you're going to want to seed it and then you chop it up finely. Mm -hmm. And once it's all chopped up finely, you throw in some cheese cloth, let it sit overnight or at least a couple, three, four hours. So, that so it, what you're saying is get an English cucumber because it's a lot simpler. It definitely <laughs> It'll make your is. life a lot easier. There's, just just get an English cucumber if you so got a chance. So much less liquid in that cucumber versus the regular cucumber. Yeah, so, right. Uh, but yeah, so we're just going to finely dice it up. Um, when I'm at home, I like to use a food processor, and I just pulse it a few times. Not quite puree, but not... Chunky chunk. So either. would you say a little, little less than this? Or is I this would, too much? What I would look little? at is try to do just a little finer, just for that texture. Okay. When you're eating it, sure. Chopping it up a little bit more will help to uh, not have that cucumber stand out as much. Sure. It'll help it blend together. Sure. So you just go like this. Yeah. So along with that cucumber, uh, we are going to use a little bit of our Yayabi Greek seasoning uh, in this recipe. We are actually using about a teaspoon of Yaya B. So. Or more if you like that extra flavor. And again, a lot of it depends on that. what you like. Right. Uh, we've been using Yaya B our whole lives. And since we have been doing that, we, we've come pretty accustomed to the flavor and how much we like to use on each item. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. How's that? So. that good? That's about right? Yeah. So, more or less cucumber? Like, what do you think? Again, it depends on your flavoring and what you like. Mm -hmm. um, that two to one ratio for me is pretty good. The okay. two cups of yogurt to the one cup of, of cucumber. All right. So with that being said, Easy. the larger you go, obviously, the more cucumber you can put in there. Okay, so, so we'll throw this in? Yep, throw that in the bowl. Oh boy, here we go. Uh -huh. This is the big step. See, Jason's like the cook cook here. I'm just the, I'm here for the food because I know it's going to taste good. And Vanna made, White. Yeah, I'm the Vanna White. Yeah. He uh, looks maybe, good. I sound okay. Yeah, I've aged a little bit maybe uh, <laughs> from the Vanna White days. Plastic but uh, Yeah, there's always plastic surgery available. That's a funny joke. Our dad always told us that, <laughs> you know, growing up that we could either do two things. We had money set aside either for college or for plastic surgery. Yeah. Obviously, we went to college. Well, yeah, we did. So. We did. All right, so give that a good mix in there. Get that moving around. Uh, and then we're just going to add a teaspoon of Yaya B. Greek seasoning in there. Do the same thing. Doing some mixing. Okay. So, got that. So Yaya B. is actually our family spice business. And uh, you just put it in? Yeah. yeah just dump her good. in and, and give her a good mix. And if you don't know, Yaya in Greek means grandmother. And this is our grandmother's original recipe. She uh, had a restaurant business for many, many years down in Rochester, Minnesota. So just a stone's throw away. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the spice they primarily use on their food in, the, in their restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yaya B is an all-purpose Greek seasoning. Um, we are biased, obviously, but <laughs> we put it on pretty much everything. Um, do you have a favorite that you would put it on? Ooh, uh, I like Greek chicken. Greek you do chicken. a little lemon juice mm -hmm. um, seasoning on a grill. What else? I mean, you know, it's super simple. No grill. marinating, anything like that. Yeah, so, yeah, that's that always good. You know, talking about Greek chicken, it goes along great with things like tzatziki. Yeah, absolutely. So you've thrown in your 
Yaya B. Yep. You got cucumber. You yep. got your yogurt. Now we're going to throw a little, little granulated garlic there as well. Okay. How much should we put in? Uh, this is about a half a teaspoon that we're throwing in there. Okay. So, and again, once, once you figure out your flavoring and the things like that that you like, I'm a garlic fan, so I like to add, you know, a good amount. So... But you also, yeah, you want to kind of be careful with it you because do, it, it can, can be a little intense. Yeah, it can be a little intense for yeah. sure. Um, so you don't have um, regular garlic or dried granulated garlic. You can use regular garlic. Just be sure to finely mince it, throw it in there. Uh, with about this amount, I would use one clove and finely dice it or mince it and put it in there. Okay. You know what? It smells good. Drew, you are done. You've just made tzatziki sauce. Are you kidding me? Is that easy? It's super simple. Oh, man. Um, really, truly, a lot of people like to use dill in theirs and throw in lemon juice or vinegar and things like that. This is how we do it. Uh, it, it lasts, it tastes good, and it's easy. Yeah. Um, what I recommend, though, is that you let this sit in your refrigerator covered for about two hours at least before you serve it. Okay. That just helps those flavors mend together and get to know each know other a little it. bit. Yeah. Mix you don't and mingle. Just jump right in. Yeah, exactly. You okay. want to chit chat, get to know each other, and then flavor, flavor tastic. Flavor tastic. <laughs> uh, I'm making up words here, guys. To We're show making up you, words, all right? Here we have a bowl that has been completed, has been sitting there for a while. Um, bring it to the camera. Yeah. One thing we're going to do today is show you a variant of this. This is our straight up Yayabi tzatziki. We're going to make our spicy today. So we're going to have what? one that's a normal. The next one, actually, why don't you just grab that one there, Drew? Okay. Are you sure? Simple. And this way we can get them all those seasonings to blend. So for me, oh, I like yeah. to use a little sriracha or I like to use a little hot sauce in it. Frank's hot sauce is another great one that mm -hmm. I like. And then I like to add some red pepper flakes. Really? Yeah. Really kicking it up a notch, huh? But not only any kind of red pepper flakes, but I like to buzz them up. So what do you mean by buzz? Buzz, I take a food or a uh, blender mm -hmm. and I actually buzz it up to a smaller size. Oh, okay. Sometimes we have too much of the, the grains in there. Yeah, you, sometimes you get in the red and pepper those, flakes, you yep. get like those big chunks. Like if you've ever been to a pizza place. And yeah, you, just, you put and it right on. But it's like this big, it seems like. Uh -huh. but yeah. By buzzing it, it makes it a little finer and it spreads it out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you do have to be careful with that if it says to use a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Don't use a teaspoon of buzzed yeah, because for sense. Minnesota, that's too spicy. I was going to say, we are in Minnesota, we and are. sometimes spice is not always what people are looking for. That's right. Me, I am. I want it. So put this in. This is about a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes in there. Boom. I know. It's a good, good amount. And then today we're using some sriracha. Uh, we're going to throw that in there as well. And Drew, to taste? This is to taste. Um, for me personally, I would probably go about a teaspoon to begin with, to go along with that. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not a rule follower, I have, so I'm just gonna. You cut are it crazy. Out. Boom. So we just give that a good mix. And again, this is for those people that like a little extra kick in their world. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you put this on? Oh, man. I mean, like, what, 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 you know, traditionally people think of gyros that right. we put it on. Gyro is a lamb beef combination here in the U.S., um, almost like a Greek meatloaf. It's on a straight Greek up. Greek hot dog. Hot dog, right? Like a Greek hot dog? Greek hot dog would <laughs> definitely work. So, I, Greek meatloaf, Greek hot dog, uh, but it's all packed together. And then they slice it off nice and thinly so that you can do that in with the tzatziki. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it just with pita bread or breads, crackers, oh, yeah. vegetables. Uh, anything that you use your ranch with, you can use that tzatziki with. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, that's yeah, it? That's it. All right. See how easy that was? That's super easy. So let's recap. Okay. Let's do a quick recap. Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt. Little bit of granulated garlic. Granulated garlic. An English cucumber. Yep. We don't want the regular ones unless you want to work harder. Right. Uh, a little Yaya B Greek seasoning. Yaya B Greek seasoning. And? Love. Love. That's it. Super easy. You got tzatziki sauce. We made our regular tzatziki sauce. We have our spicy tzatziki sauce. Cool. Use it on everything. And enjoy.
Yeah, well, again, this is the Barbus Brothers brought to you by Yaiabi Greek Seasoning, and thanks for, uh, thanks for showing us how yeah. to cook some Enjoy. tzatziki. Yeah, enjoy. Let us know what you think. We're on where? Social media? Yeah, Facebook. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, yaiabi.com, Insta, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Get your pictures of your food. Tag us on there. Let us know what recipes you like. And it's uh, Yaya B Greek Seasoning. So. Yaya B.com. Also some great recipes on there as well if you like different things. Yeah, for so. sure. Cheers. In the 1920s, Americans were, well, you could say, drunk. In the 1920s, the Great Depression was going on, so the government decided to stop selling liquor. They were thinking that the crime would go down, as bootleggers and gangs took over, as Al Capone was the notorious gang leader, and the crime was at all high in the 1920s. <laughs> Nearly 100 years later, the craft beer industry hit the market. I thought, you know, there's one way we might be able to make it work. There's one thing we've got that they don't have. And they might have more money than us, and they maybe know more people than we do. But we've got Surly Nation. May 5th, 2011, Martin Dayton signed the Shirley Bill to let craft beer owners sell their beer at their breweries. Hey, I'm Eric. I'm the uh, Minnesota sales guy for uh, Milwaukee Brewing Company, uh, MKE. Uh, what do you like the most about craft beer? Uh, I love uh, that craft beer is absolutely tasty. I enjoy it. Uh, it's just something different. Uh, it's been a big part of my life for a long time now. So, yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, so my name is Dan Parker. I'm with the Brooklyn Brewery. Uh, we also are with uh, 21st Night and Funk Works out here at the Beer Dabbler today. So I actually come from a chef background. Uh, so I got into beer specifically because of flavor. Um, you know, the way that beer interacts with food, the amount of different flavors that we have, the different profiles. Um, it really opens up a whole lot as far as pairing goes. Everybody's familiar with wine and food pairing, but beer is actually a way better component, uh, uh, partner to, to food. So that's where I kind of got into craft beer. Um, so yeah, just the, the huge array of flavors that we have at our disposal. All right, Brian Mills here with uh, Deschutes Brewery out of Bend, Oregon. Uh, my favorite part about craft beer is the endless variety and always being able to find, discover new things. All right. Since the Shirley Bill has been passed, Minnesota is ranked 14th in the nation in the craft beer industry. It has created 667 jobs directly with the craft beer. It also has created 24,000 jobs worth in the wholesale or retail jobs in the craft beer industry. Uh, Nick Barth with Beaver Island Brewing Company, one of the co-founders here of Beaver Island Brewing Company in St. Cloud, Minnesota, just two blocks away from the River's Edge Convention Center. This is actually our fourth uh, St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour. We did our debut, our world debut here four years ago. So every year for the St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour, we do a different beer. This year it's Revolution 4, which is a cherry doppeldunkel. And it's really exciting to see not only this event grow, but see our brewery grow in tandem. Um, there's been a lot of opportunity for us each year to evolve our brand, and to see the Craft Beer Tour grow has been something special, because this is our hometown, this is our backyard. Um, when we were presented with the opportunity to become a larger player, we were really excited because if it's going to happen in St. Cloud, we want it to happen with us. Uh, so again, this is our town and we're very proud of the St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour. And in the last few years, we've been honored with the best of show. And we're hopeful for today, but if it doesn't happen, that's all right too, because at the end of the day, we're all winners in the opportunity to be a part of the St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour and the craft beer uh, industry in general. There have been a lot of ups and downs in the last uh, 10 years, but I think the craft beer industry in general has been a bonded, well put together industry. It comprised of a lot of people who want the same result. We want to see craft beer be the number one consumed beverage and everything else is second to that. So, cheers. Um, how do you feel about the craft beer industry? 
Uh, craft beer is fantastic. You know, I discovered craft beer myself probably you know, almost 20 years ago at O'Hara's Brew Pub. Um, that was my, my toehold in the craft beer. Um, one of the really fun things about Pantown Brewing is that we actually have the original O'Hara's equipment and that's what we're brewing on. So for me, it kind of brings craft beer full circle and it, it's fun to be able to, to say that that's the equipment that we're using on there. Where I discovered craft beer, now we're moving forward in the craft beer and trying new things and really pushing the limits on what we can do. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I moved from uh, Southern California here to open this with my brother, Tim Jones, and um, so we were just, you know, surrounded by craft breweries and, 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 and uh, places opening up all the time and just like, inundated, overwhelmed with it in California. Uh, when we came here, we just saw how much it's growing and the community that the uh, local breweries have, even the ones that have been here for a little while, along with the ones that have opened up since we've opened up, just to help each other out and stuff. So it's wonderful to be a part of that community and uh, just to see the, the growth and uh, of a whole uh, state getting into uh, the whole beer community and craft brewery and stuff, as opposed to coming from California where it's already just so saturated. Stuff's good. Always coming out with new stuff, always experimenting, uh, coming out with uh, new things to keep people interested in coming back to the tavern. Beer industry's good. Solid. So we all worry about bubbles, because we've all been alive in the last 10 years. I still think that there's plenty of market share to go around right now, as far as if people are embracing small, independent breweries. We're starting it to get back to that point pre-prohibition. Um, and a lot of that had to do with logistics and, and refrigeration and all that stuff, but to where every town had their own, sometimes a few, breweries. They had the, you know, um, and then you combine that with the fact that we can all travel a lot farther. I think it's wonderful. Because great beer alone, which is a good thing, just doesn't cut it. You know, <laughs> so, but I like to see everybody stepping up their game and actually making good quality beer. You know, where it's not just good beer alone that just sets you apart from everybody else. Because that doesn't say a lot about everybody else. Right now we have a lot of great people making a lot of great beer. And I don't care who you are, that's awesome. Cat Beer Boom in Minnesota also has helped festivals and underground music in Minnesota grow. Uh, this is one of like the primary events in our year like we try to get this on scheduled every time that we can and, and perform here um, it's really a blending of all things that are amazing right you have craft beer you have good music and you have a fundraising event for like a community-based organization um, which their whole focus is about giving back so you know what what's not to like about that you know Hey, I'm Robert Kasich, uh, one of the owners and co-founders of 612 Brew. I'm Jeremy Jones from Iyer Brewing Company. Hi, Marty Check, Pantown Brewing. You know, 612, like I said before, the, the name is synonymous with Minneapolis. Um, we were one of the first production breweries in, um, in Minneapolis. Um, one of the first tap rooms in Minneapolis, too. Um, you know, so starting that um, that upward trend of Minneapolis and the brewing scene um, comes with a lot of great responsibility, responsibility as well. You know, we work with uh, local charities. Um, we work with uh, the community to to give back. We uh, every Wednesday we have a program here in the tap room where we give proceeds back to a local charity. Um, we work with Inside Neighborhood Services to do uh, some some give back programs for our six one two group. And we also try and get our our tap room. In it too. So not only the employees of 612, but also the guests and our, uh, our patrons and our regulars can come through and be a part of our give back program where we have initiatives to uh, work with the local, local community to, to help give our time and give our dollars back.
Well, the Pantone idea, that was Noel's idea. Um, he had that paperwork and everything filed long before he even talked to me. And uh, we had a lot of discussions about whether that was the way to move forward or not. But based on our location, the part of town that we're in, and the, the fun connection to St. Cloud history, it was just a kind of a no-brainer in the end to do it. We say no-brainer, we talked about it, but um, in the end it came full circle and it was really fun to do that. And I didn't know a ton when we started this, but I, I kind of took it on myself to go to the Stearns County History Museum and uh, research there, go through the exhibit, and then sit down in the, uh, the research wing and talk to the, the researchers in there. I can't believe the amount of information that's available out there. People don't, don't even know what was going on in St. Cloud in 1917 you know, through 1919. It, there's a real good chance that we could have been a major automobile manufacturer and it, it didn't work out, but you know, it's fun to kind of go through the history and see what was there and where it could have gone. And uh, Sam Pandolfo, the, the founder of the Pan Motor Company, was way ahead of his time. He was a major innovator. And so to be able to have that connection to a automobile innovator and, and, and try and, and do that as a brewery, maybe be a brewery innovator, is, is kind of fun. We hope that uh, we can live up to that legacy. Hey guys, it's Desi, and we're standing in front of our St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour booth representing for the Hop Shop, uh, homebrew and wine supply store up here in St. Cloud, Minnesota. There's two ways of making your own beer on the homebrew level. You can either start with an extract kit, which is basically a pre-made wort that you just have to reconstitute with water, or you can do it from the grain. So you just take malted barley, um, they steep that in hot water, and then after about an hour, we'll boil that liquid, add some hops to it, any other flavors you wanna add, Cool it down, drop it in the fermenter, pitch uh, the appropriate yeast for the style you want to make, and usually seven to ten days later, you've got a really nice beer. Um, you either have to bottle it at that point in time and then wait another two weeks for it to be carbonated, or you can do it like uh, I like to and put it in a keg, um, force carbonate it, and be drinking it in a couple of days. So, what's the number one thing that people do wrong in making their own beer? The number one thing people do wrong. Yeah. Man, I'd say probably their mash temperatures are one of the biggest things that people will do wrong. They might either mash a little too hot or too cold. Um, and then the other thing that's the most important thing to not do wrong is sanitation. So if you shortcut anything, um, sanitation is the one thing that you don't want to shortcut. So some people will do that. They get a little infection in their beer and then they have an off All right, so how do you feel about the craft beer industry? Um, right now, the craft beer industry is actually in a really, I think it's in a great place for home brewers, um, and it's in a fantastic place for small tap rooms. Um, my personal opinion right now, package market is getting a little bit saturated. You got a lot of options in the liquor store, um, but in all the small craft breweries and smaller systems, they're doing great. We're getting more of them opening up every day, and those guys are actually making quite a bit of money. Um, on those little tap rooms, and I think we're going to see more of those coming along. Okay. Go. Great. Three, two, one. Hey, I'm Eric from Mighty Axe Hops. We're here at the St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour for the first time, and we're here because we're your local hop farmer. We grow just up the road in Foley. We supply a ton of the breweries that are here. Hope you have a great day. How, how and why hops? What, where'd you start? So. Hops are the main. Hops are the main ingredient in beer. They're the most sexy ingredient in beer. And we started five years ago, just a couple acres, and now we grow 80. We're the largest hop farm from Michigan to Idaho. We're super lucky here in Minnesota to actually live in a state where we can grow hops. They don't grow too far south. So we're lucky as a craft beer community that we even can have local hops. Yeah, well, I think 2019 is going to be a big year for Minnesota craft. I think we continue to see a lot of openings. Probably smaller breweries, not huge production uh, breweries, but. More and more it's going to be about brewers telling us why they're different on that shelf. You walk in any liquor store, there's a million local IPAs. Why do you care about that one or that one? And we think that local, the story of using local hops will really speak to consumers. Okay, cool. Thanks again. Nice to meet you.